Hey, what up? It's your girl Michaela Grace here. Welcome back. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe. Make sure to like this video. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So today, um, we're doing a story time. Um, if you guys have seen my last video, my birthday vlog, you know that I was recently in a car accident. So we're just gonna talk about that today. Um, so it was November 16th. I was taking my friend Chrissy home um, from our campus, Wright State, up to Cleveland, which is like a three hour drive. We left around, I think four, but because it was a Friday, there was like traffic and stuff. So we didn't get to her house until like eight or nine, I think. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. It was between like eight and nine I dropped her off. The ride there was smooth, fine, okay, everything was great. I was doing really good. The drive back is where things got bad. Um, I was completely awake. I had a star like a venti, like freaking Starbucks iced caramel latte that day, okay, like, I was ready, I was prepared. Um, I always make sure I get like a lot of coffee before I take a long drive like that. Um, because especially like late at night like that, like you need to make sure that you're gonna be awake. So I was driving back home to campus um, and I was about an hour from my house, an hour and a half from campus. So I was like halfway through my drive. Um, I was in the center lane and I saw that I had a quarter tank of gas left. I was like, okay, I need to make sure that I can get home. So I was driving this new car that my dad just got um, to replace my old car, which was a like Chevy Aveo, it was like an 09. Okay, the new car that I was driving is a 2015 Buick. Um, it's like a push start, it's really cool, nice car, and um, I was driving this car because we have a second car, um, it's a WRX Subaru, and I was driving that car, but my dad had to get some repairs on it. So I had to switch out the cars the last time that I was home, which was like a month ago. Um, like October 13th, I think is when I was last home. So I was driving this new car, um, and to the best of my knowledge, I thought that it had the mostly the same features as the WRX, the car that I had been driving. Well, the WRX has a feature where you can see how many miles are left in your tank. Um, and it's like on the this little home screen on your dashboard. Well, for the Buick, all that stuff is on your um, odometer. So it's on this little screen and you have like these little controls on the steering wheel. So you can do it like while you're while you're driving. Um, I was trying to go through the menu to see how many miles I had left in my tank so I knew like if I could make it home because I was following my GPS. So I had my GPS which would tell me like how many miles I had left in my trip and then I was like okay I need to see how many miles I have left in my tank because if I don't have enough I need to stop for gas. And my friend's mom had given me gas money so I was able to use that or I could use um, the credit card my dad had given me solely for gas. Um, so, I was looking at the odometer, looking through the menu to see how many miles I had left. I couldn't find it. I probably looked for about a minute or less, um, but I wasn't looking up every like five to ten seconds like I should have been. And that's where it got um, tricky because I, like I said, I was on the highway, I was in the center lane, um, I think I was on like I-71. I the speed limit was 70 miles, um, it was around 10 to 10.30 at this time, so I was trying to make sure I got home fast enough, so I was going five over, which doesn't sound that bad when you think about it, but when you get into an accident, it's a lot worse than like you know going 35 in like a like a street in your neighborhood or something um or not like your neighborhood but you know what I mean the city limits um so I'm in the center lane I'm going 75 miles an hour 
and I was looking through my thing. I was like, okay, I should probably look up because like I need to make sure I'm paying attention, make sure I'm not swerving because I have a tendency to um, sway into other lanes, even if I'm like fully awake. Um, just because I get so focused on looking straight ahead, I forget to make sure I'm in the lane. So I looked up and within seconds, I was like, oh my gosh, like I saw the back of the red car um, that I had smashed into and I pressed on the brake um, and I just kind of watched the impact um, and heard it. And the worst part was like, I was listening to a podcast while I was driving. So like, um, to like help keep me awake and everything. Um, and so I'm hearing my podcast and the crash and it was just like one of those surreal moments where like, it doesn't seem like it's happening. Kind of like in movies, like when they play like slow music over like a crash scene um it just it's weird like it, it doesn't seem like it's actually happening but it is um and so I was like oh my gosh like this just happened and I'm by myself at this point um so it was just me in my car but so I I pressed on my brake and then I checked the lanes and got over to the right shoulder um because like obviously I needed to like check out the damage like see if I hurt anyone because what the heck you know like that could be anyone in the car so I got out and I looked at the front of my car and it was like the little logo thing had broken off that was gone um most of the bumper had fallen off um but it didn't look like I couldn't drive it. Like, it's not like, it didn't look like there was any damage to like the internal parts, you know? Um, and then I was gonna check out that stuff, but it was like really cold and I couldn't get the um, hood open. That's what it's called, the hood. I couldn't get it open, so I had to like close it later um, cause I like jammed it. Um, but I was just trying to see, you know, like what was going on so I could give them as much information as possible when the time came. So, the people that I hit had actually, um, I don't know why, but they went over to the left shoulder and they were like about 60 feet up. So um, I had to walk up and then I couldn't go over because the traffic was so bad. So I just was shouting across the highway like, is everyone okay? Like, I'm so sorry and all this. And I'm like pacing back and forth just like I was so out of it it was insane um I was trying to talk with them communicate um and I was like okay we need to probably move our car up more because we're really far from them so I went back to my car after I panicked and stuff and um I moved my car up and then I called my roommate because she was like the first person that I thought about I was like I need to let her know I'm not going to be home on time I was supposed to get home around midnight um, she knew that I was taking our friend home and so I was like, I just need to tell her like, I'm not gonna be home on time. So I call her, I tell her what's going on. I'm trying not to break down, but I did because I'm an emotional wreck. Like, that's cute. So I called her, let her know what was going on. And I was freaking out cause I knew that the next person I needed to call was my dad. The car's under his name, all that. Um, and I, you know, I didn't know what to do so I talked to her and then I communicated with other people a little bit more um somehow this girl that was driving she was able to run across the street like three like she ran over three lanes with all this traffic she made it safely thank goodness um and so we were talking um she said that she had called um 911 so there was a patrol person on the way, um, and we kind of just waited. Um, yeah, and so I ended up not even calling my dad until I was filling out the paperwork. And so the crash happened at like 10.30, and no one got there until I think like 11 or 11.30 maybe. Um, which was like a long time. So actually it might've been, it was probably around 11 when the first patrol person came because she was supposed to be getting off at like 10 
I felt really bad about that. Um, so she tried to get the report started and everything um, till the next patrol per highway patrol person got um, to the scene. So she was asking us like how fast we were going and stuff and I was gonna answer, but I'm slow. So the other lady answered first and she was like, I was going probably 60. And I was like, oh shoot, what was I going then? Because I knew I was going five over the speed limit, but with everything going on, I forgot how fast I was going. So I was like, I was probably going somewhere around 65. Cause in my mind I was like, I just got in an accident. Um, I've already had a speeding ticket in this car. And so like, I don't have points, like I didn't have points on my license yet, but like going 15 over the speed limit and crashing into someone that didn't sound so good in my mind so um I just said like I was probably going five over so somewhere around 65 so that happened um and then I was trying to see like what was going on with my car and we kind of just like waited around um I got the report started and she took like our license and stuff um and I, what did I do next? Oh my gosh. So we talked to her and then I called my, I called my roommate back to let her know what was going on because she wanted me to fill her in. And I was like, I still have to call my dad, but I don't, like, I don't know what, I, what I'm going to say because in the back of my mind, like, I already knew that my dad was going to yell at me and ask how it happened and like I in my mind I thought he was gonna yell at me like he was gonna be utterly pissed off okay um but when I called him later like when I was filling out the report after the second officer came um he was really calm which freaked me out because I was like that's not really like him like when he gets mad he is yelling and you know just going off so he was really calm and it was really weird um but he was just trying to make sure that like everything was you know being taken care of um and apparently my car did need it towed in the end because um after i gave i gave the report and you know everything was like cleared and they said that was okay to go um i was gonna leave and I noticed that like the little screen on my odometer said that the engine power was reduced and it was making this weird sound. Um, so it's like, okay, that can't be good. So like I might be able to drive off, might not. Because the, patro the patrol officer, I don't really know what they're called, just the patrol guy, okay. He said that it looked like it was okay. The other person's car though, like it was not safe to drive. Um, because I like their trunk was literally smashed in it was terrible um and this was this was my first car accident guys just so you know like I've been driving since I for about three years now um oh yeah it'll be it'll be three years in December so I've been driving for almost three years and I have not gotten in an accident up until now which really sucks because like I'm still a young driver you know um and it's just like what the heck like seriously so whatever um then I couldn't drive I like my car literally would not get past 20 miles an hour so like I was trying to like s speed up in the shoulder like the officer had told me to so then I could um switch lanes well, it literally was like I was driving in a like school zone like the entire time. Like I was going so slow. I was like, what the heck? Like this is not okay. Like that's not a good thing. Like it won't go up to speed. So like I tried stopping and then going again. It would not go. So um, the officer had told me like if I couldn't drive it, then, you know, just pull over and call someone and they'll be happy to help and um, get me taken care of. So I pulled over and... I've already talked to, I had already talked to like my insurance people to get the claim going and everything. Um, and this, at this point it's like 
one in the morning. So I've been in on the freaking highway for like a good minute now. Um, Cause it happened at 10.30. This was happening like around one. So, you know, like, I think like, that's like what, two, three hours? Yeah. So I pulled over again and I had to call my insurance people back be like, hey, like I need a towing service. I just called to claim, like put a claim number on this accident that happened. Um, so they were being difficult because they were asking for all this weird information and like they were wanting, oh, excuse me. They were wanting me to find a towing service, like an auto service that was open. It was after midnight, who was gonna be open? It was crazy. So the patrol person from earlier had like pulled over and like put some flyers down for me. Um, and by the time that my dad, my dad had came to pick me up because I was like, hey dad, I need you to pick me up. Like the car has to get towed after all. Um, and so he was trying to tell me what to do. I was dealing with the Allstate people, um, our insurance company. And as all this was going on, it took to like two in the morning or something um, before like I like was in the car with my dad driving home. Um, so as I was going through all these calls and everything, my car was like getting really hot. So I had to keep turning it off because my dad told me like once it gets like the three quarters, like it's gonna like, it's not good for the car. I guess I was gonna die or something. If it, I don't know something with the engine was gonna happen or the battery I don't know so it got to that point like a couple times so I had to turn the car off and then turn it back on because I had to stay warm it's like 30 40 degrees out I don't know um, so I'm trying to stay warm the flares that he had like three flares um, going like around the back of my car and when he first put them down I could see like all of them like in my side view mirror um, but then by the time my dad came, there was like one still going. And then like, I think it went out by the time he got there. Um, so then I was in the car with my dad, like I had to take all the valuables out and my dumb self left my parking permit for school in the car. So the past week and a half, I've been go driving around campus without a parking permit. So hopefully I don't get a ticket for that because that's gonna be like $50. Um, and I only know that because last, yeah, last year um, in February when I had came for my audition for the acting program, um, there wasn't enough spots in the lot that they told me in the email to park in. So I had to park in like the next lot over. And I got a $50 fine for it because I didn't have a parking permit for like, that spot and I was like well how was I supposed to know there was no spots left in the place where I was supposed to park anyways so I knew it was gonna be a I know it's gonna be like $50 if I get a ticket but hopefully that, that doesn't happen um so my dad picked me up it's like 1 30 or 2 now I don't know um I'd say it was about 1 30 at this point when he came and got me and so we were in the car trying to make sure that um all the stuff was getting taken care of like when the tow people were coming and all that. And so he ended up talking to people with Allstate, the Allstate people, because he was getting mad, that, like he was getting frustrated with how they were dealing with everything. So he's ta he started talking to them and um, that was going on. And then basically there's they said like, we don't have to stay there like by the time that, oh, Okay, yeah, so this is what happened, okay. So my dad was talking to all state people, um, getting the information for the towing service. He called the towing service to talk to them about like whether or not he could just like leave the payment there with the key so we could go because like I said, like we were an hour from our house. So we did that, um, left the payment with the key on the dashboard and then we left and basically the whole ride home my dad just like kept asking me questions and stuff like he wasn't asking like if I was okay like he just kept asking like 
I don't even understand why you were out here. Like, what were you doing? Why did you give your friend a ride? What did she owe you? And all this stuff that I really didn't need to hear right now because I was still under a lot of sh like stress, you know, like I was still pretty distressed. Um, I felt so guilty. Like we just got this car in August. It was, it's only November. So September, October, November. We've had this car for like what, two and a half months. And I just got in a wreck. Like I felt so crappy about this. And he just didn't seem to care. He just kept, like, not, he wasn't yelling at me. He just kept asking me questions and stuff. And about, like, I'd say, like, halfway through the car ride, like, not even, like, 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes in, I started sobbing. And that went on for about probably another 20 minutes. Um, and he just didn't care, didn't try to console me or anything. Um, he would get calls from, like, Allstate or the towing service. And he'd have me like write down the information like he just did not care so that was great um, I got home at about 3 in the morning and then I just like literally crawled into I turned my heater on because my room was ice cold turned my heater on and then literally went to bed in the clothes that I was wearing that day like I was just so done and then the next day I just kind of woke up when I woke up it was about 12 30 or 1 when I did and then I got my stuff together and got the keys for our other car so I could drive back to campus and went home so that was that was my accident um now here's the thing because I I'm not the best driver I know this I'm a little reckless however let's go back okay so this is a theory I have by the way I'm thinking of starting a series with you guys called so I have a theory it's just gonna be a whole bunch of dumb theories I have about like little things here and there well think of this as like the first one okay so I have a theory that a my license plate for my original car, my Aveo, my Veil, is cursed. And two, Mercury went into retrograde that night, and I think it screwed me over. Hear me out. Okay. Now, the license plate. Because we traded in my um, Aveo for the Buick, the Buick has the same license plate as the Aveo. Now, the Aveo. I had... I drove that car for about a year and a half, I'd say, um, until like I moved in with my dad my junior year and we got, we had a Mustang. It was like his like sidecar. Um, Cause he also has like a truck that he uses for like his everyday work stuff and yada yada. So we traded in the Mustang for the WRX. It's a blue car. I'm gonna reference it as the blue car a lot. So blue car. The truck is silver, my veil was yellow. Okay, so we got the blue car, yellow car, silver truck. Okay, so I drove my yellow car for about like a year and a half and um, I got into, I, I, didn't, I didn't get into any accidents. That's not what happened. Okay, so I got two tickets with this car um, and on several occasions I got locked out of my car and um, just like a lot of crazy stuff happened. This past summer, um, if you guys saw my video, I almost died um, because my car broke down on the side of the road. Um, that happened with that car. So as you can see, this car had a lot of problems. Um, love, love my car. His name was Sonny, rest in peace. But he had a lot of problems. So my first two tickets, um, the one I didn't get charged for, but the other one I did, I don't know if it put any points on my license though. I don't know, but I paid the final. So anyways, the first one was because I ran a stop sign by accident. I didn't see it. Okay. And then I almost hit a cop because of it. So that's great. Um, and then the second time was because I had people sitting on top of my car in the fairgrounds like across the street from my house and 
um, my friend who didn't have her license was driving at the time. So yeah, but I didn't get charged for that one, which was good. Um, the, the first one I did get charged for, but anyways, so that happened. And then again, there was like the whole, I almost died thing. Like my engine literally fell out of my car. Um, can't get more unlucky than that, you know, like almost dying because your engine fell out because of some stupid repair place. Anyways, so that license plate, the license plate of that car was on the Buick. Now with the Buick, um, not many people know this, but about, I think it was like a month, month and a half ago, you know, a, about a month ago, um, because I remember I was leaving a job interview and I had gotten the job. I was like, that's awesome. So I went to go pick up my friends from, um, what's that book place called? Oh, Barnes and Noble. Wow. Um, so I went to go pick up my friends from Barnes and Noble because that's where like I left them while I went to go do my interview because it's only like 15 minutes away. Um, I was really happy. Um, I was in an unfamiliar area because it was like a side county of like where my school is from. Um, and I got a speeding ticket for going, I was, they said that I was going like 18 over. I did not know why I was going 18 over because on, I was using my phone um, with like that little, you know, Apple Maps. Okay, Apple told me the speed limit was, um, I think they said it was like 65 or something. Or wait. They said it was 45. Apparently it was 35. So I was going 48 in a 35. I think that's what happened. Yeah. So I didn't know I was speeding because my GPS told me the speed limit was 45. So they ended up like the district attorney or whatever. No, the prosecutor. I think that's what he was the prosecutor attorney person okay he was like oh like we'll just waive it so that way you like to put it as you were going like seven over or something I don't know I don't remember how he did it but he basically made it so I didn't get two points taken off my license um which was great so that happened with that car and now the accident so as you can see some pretty bad things have all happened with this license plate so this is my theory my license plate is cursed because I don't know why, but it's cursed. I think my car was mad at me or something. Don't know. License plate cursed. Okay. So either that and or Mercury going into retrograde that night screwed me over. Now, if you guys don't know what Mercury going into retrograde means, basically, um, it's basically like how the planet aligns itself um mercury and venus i know go into retrograde um i don't know too much about it but i just know that like i found out over thanksgiving break that mercury had gone into retrograde that night i was like oh my gosh that's so crazy because my friend was telling me about it and she said she said that like basically um mercury going into retrograde can affect traveling communication things like that um so we we're like shoot like what when did it go in because um it was already it's already retrograde right now it is until i think december 6th that sounds right so i was looking it up um while we were in her car and everything do 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 um one site was telling me the 17th but a lot of sites were telling me the 16th so otherwise the night of the accident i don't know what all that was people are laughing really hysterically out there anyways mercury went into retrograde the night of my accident and it affects um traveling as i said so rewind to the beginning of the accident when i felt like nothing was going wrong you know looking at my thing for so long until i looked up and that was when i like saw the accident so like it was just like one of those like surreal feelings like i said you know like i didn't think anything was wrong at all like everything felt fine and then all of a sudden boom accident so a normal person would think you know i need to be looking up every now and then you know and like i didn't okay so i didn't like 
feel like I was getting close to the car and I've had like moments like that before where like um I felt like I was getting close to a car because I was like looking at something so I look up and I'm like oh shoot slow down because I was getting a little close so for me to not notice that I was getting that close to a car was pretty weird and the other lady had said that she was going 60 miles right so I was going 15 miles faster than her um which I told the second patrol officer I forgot to say that earlier but anyways um so she's going 60 I was going 75 and she told both officers that she didn't even see me coming closer which is like insane because one why are you going 10 miles under the speed limit two how do you not see two bright lights getting closer and closer to the back of your car like I notice that kind of stuff all the time like when people get really close to me and I'm like okay like that's weird like I either need to speed up or they need to slow down so for her to not notice that and like be going over the speed limit like that's really weird too like neither of us felt like anything was going wrong um and then like it just happened and mercury went into retrograde and i'm a scorpio it's my season so like i guess like it affects me more because like it's during like my um like time or whatever so yeah those are my theories um because like what the heck so let me know in the comments below what you guys think but i'm pretty sure that my license plate is cursed and mercury screwed me over because that just doesn't happen like i feel like stuff like that doesn't just happen like with all like the circumstantial evidence will say like i was going five over she was going ten over neither of us felt like anything was going wrong there's been so many accidents with that license plate like so many like things gone wrong um and just the simple fact that like <laughs> mercury went into retrograde like you can't you can't deny it so um if you guys are into astrology and stuff like let me know what you think about that um just let me know in the comments below like what you guys think about this at all um i think that's all i have for you guys today so yeah um like subscribe comment below i hope it made your mondays a little bit brighter um probably not with this terrible story but hopefully you learned a lesson from it i don't know so hope i made your mondays a little bit brighter i have to go and i will see you guys later bye